Open mold casting. Half the flasks, twice the fun. Okay, here's what I mean by open mold casting. I'm going to put the patterns here, ram it up with sand like normal, flip it around, remove the patterns, and then just pour the aluminum into the open hole. So it's a little bit different than the normal kind of sand casting with the two flasks that match together. It's going to be half as much ramming, and i got a whole bunch of patterns here I'm going to do. Got the Jeep one back. You might remember this from the uh, keychain video. Well, now my brother has a Jeep and his birthday is coming up, so I'm going to add that to the uh, birthday present. The way we do this, like normal, the pattern you want to see is up. The other side, you want to be able to pull it out of the sand, like normal. This has draft, so I can pull it out from this side. Uh, the other side is just kind of going to be flat. It'll probably not be as smooth as the normal two kind of two flask sand casting, but eh. This side's got the Jeep stuff. Who cares what the back is? I was going to try these and these. These are 3D printed. Now these aren't printed with draft, but they're very small. And I've read you can get away with no draft on small things. As long as there's no undercuts, uh, you can kind of get away with it. Also, the very bottom layer of all of these squishes out. Because that's the, the extruder squishes it as it's sticking it to the bed so you have better adhesion. That will have to be at the parting line. or This isn't a parting line. There's no, no two flasks to part. But that will have to be down because I will remove that from the sand. Remember, this is going to be flipped around. So what's down will be up just to keep it confusing. So we're going to uh, see how that works. Also, this has varying thickness. You're told that uh, having a consistent thickness, like say this, on a sand cast part or any cast part is nice because it allows the, the metal to, to kind of solidify at a set rate. Thicker parts will hold the heat for longer and won't solidify as uh, evenly and you end up with all kinds of problems, shrinkage and whatever. Uh, we, we will find out. This is all a test. This is just a test, like everything I do. This part, this is a Subaru keychain that I colored with oil paint pens. Maybe a video on that eventually if we refilm it. This kind of does have draft, but it has holes. I'm going to see how well that shows up. This rotor, very, very shallow details. And this, dots and symbol. These letters are raised quite a lot, and there's some space between. I'm going to see if uh, the sand cares so much to uh, stick together and not get trapped in between the little things here. So let's get arranging. I'm not going to do any gating of this. I'm just going to kind of pour into the top. Still don't remember who suggested just dumping this all over before putting the flask on, but that was a good idea. Oh, so much baby powder. I wonder how well the baby powder will fill these uh, the print lines and kind of hide the print line pattern. Just going to use tons of it. Why not? That's... That's not the right. There we go. The totally not stolen makeup brush. That's just way too much baby powder. I'm sorry. It's almost obscene. I've seen baby powder used in uh, other castings and cores. Uh, I think on, was it my Fred Boy's channel? <coughs> anyway, it, uh, for some reason, it improves the surface quality of the, the casting. Don't know why. He didn't really provide any explanations, but, you know, it, it worked, so he just kept doing it. Okay, that was too much. People warn me next time before I do that. I don't even know if it's stuck to the plastic. The plastic's so slippery. But that might be a good thing. Excuse me a minute while I go get some breathable air. Okay. It's still cloudy over here. Jeez. The way that stuff sticks to the air, it's crazy. It's like smog, only white and poisonous. So exactly like smog. Sieve! Someone told me this is called a sieve. I should have known that. Hey! I wonder if it'd be beneficial to like stick a bunch of sand in the holes when it's like thin. Is it beneficial to like push it in while I, while I can and get it definitely down into the crevices? Does that help? I ask the camera, which can't respond. I mean, what does a camera do in life, really, other than just sit there and blink? What a sad existence. He doesn't get to melt anything at all. I mean, I hope he doesn't. I mean, if he's melting anything, it's the SD card, and I do not want that to melt. They are cheap now, but still, I mean, the data, the data is priceless. It's pictures of my children and videos of me welding stuff. Oh, oh, what's that? A wood shaving. You're not sand. Although I think there is precedent for wood, like, sawdust, but like powder, powdered wood pulp or whatever to be added to casting sand for some reason. Maybe there's a really good salesman who's just trying to get rid of it. And make a profit selling the extra sawdust to chumps. Just realized wedding ring covered in sand. Bad. Bad Paul. Ta da! Somewhat not really smooth. Moment of truth! Lift! Oh, well, they're all stuck in the sand. That's a good sign. Look at that. That's looking good. And don't worry that I'm nicking it up because this blade 
is broken on the end. Whoops a daisy. Perhaps not enough draft on that one. But I see a Jeep face staring back at me, so that's good. Oh man, I am so caffeinated today. I can't even hold the knife steady with two hands. Oh, oh no, that's bad. Yeah, you know what? That's gonna be what it's gonna be. Some of that detail preserved. When I was in high school, I played a lot of music. Still do. But in high school, we had a thing called solo and ensemble, where you it was like a competition every year. You weren't like competing against other people, but you were trying to learn a solo and stuff. And I would always, before going in to do my performance to the judge, I don't know why I would do this, I would chug a bottle of Mountain Dew. You know, thinking, oh, this is a really fast song, Symphony Espanol, lots of fast notes, I'll drink a bunch of sugar and caffeine, that'll help. What it actually does is make you jittery. It doesn't make you play better, it makes you play appreciably worse. Like you're trying to play violin while attached to something. Here, maybe this will work better. Pieces of sheet metal. Flip straight up. Oh, uh, no, that didn't work. I mean, I can see the letters, but it looks all janky. Well, we're, we're just going to live with that. It's going to be janky. Holding breath quite carefully now. Yeah, it looks like these center things have pulled up. Okay, yeah, the Hodor stop, that's a bust. Just not enough draft on those inside things there. The Hodor is going to act as a trap to catch anything that flows that way. All right, barbecue time. You might not know from watching the videos, but I cut out a lot of time between firing this up and pouring. So I do some other things in the meantime to, to kill the time. One of them was fixing an old toy duck I had when I was a child so that my own kids could play with it. Here I am giving it a test drive now. It, it worked. All right, a couple things to talk about. First, the reason that these failed uh, is lack of draft. These are straight tubes. They need to be kind of open a little bit to allow the sand, to allow this anyway, to pull out of the sand nice and easy without yanking it. It's also got these little layer lines, which are sort of like little teeth to hold it in, and you don't really want that. And then generally they say you want a little bit of draft, like 5%, uh, and also you want everything to be smooth, not hard. A lot of people will paint with primer, like fill primer, sand and uh, you know, polish when they're done and get it nice and smooth and shiny and slippery so it comes right out of the sand. I did none of those, uh, but it turns out that those good molding practices that everyone talks about and they tell you you should do, uh, th those are good molding practices and you should do them. So I didn't learn from my mistakes. Second, uh, I have acquired a different kind of degasser. I talked before about uh, washing soda, which was pretty popular, and a video by Lucky Gen 1001, which was pretty conclusively convincing to me anyway that it's not good. Uh, I got something else. I got some kind of pool chlorine tablets. Not tablets, like a powder. Uh, there's a bunch of different kinds of pool chlorine. Some of them contain hydrogen. Don't want to use those because you're trying to get hydrogen out of there. Molten aluminum has a very strong affinity for hydrogen. It will pull it right out of a molecular bond. It doesn't care. It does that with water. If moisture bubbles up through it, it rips water apart and it steals the hydrogen out of it. Uh, if you're asking me what kind of pool chlorine you should use, uh, don't. Don't use pool chlorine because it releases chlorine gas. It's bad. Bad stuff. Uh, your probably best bet, best bet really is don't cast aluminum. It's dangerous. If you're going to cast aluminum anyway, your best bet is probably to melt clean scrap. Keep it molten for as little time as possible. Just melt it, get it right up to pouring temperature, and pour. Don't give it any time for hydrogen to sink in there. And if you're particularly concerned with getting your, your, your melted stuff contaminated, buy good alloy stuff. You can buy it all over the place. All over the internet, you can actually buy a specific alloy of aluminum. It's like five bucks a pound though. It's not free. I got a lot of this stuff for free. So, you know, free but risky. Not free but, well, still risky because you can still contaminate it through a million other ways. Guess what I'm saying is good luck having pure alloy. Best of luck to you. I'm not going to be able to do it, so I'm not even going to try. Still melting, melting, melting. Do not want to get my camera very close. Don't want my camera melting. I'm doing this all in voiceover because I'm doing this Sunday afternoon and Sunday afternoon was quite a nice day. So nice in fact that my neighbors were outside with their grandkids playing around and uh, I didn't really want to draw that much attention, especially because they could have seen me. They're really very good neighbors and I like them to keep thinking I'm not a complete psychopath. But here you can see the, the mold, the pouring, it's kind of balling up, you know, it's not flowing into the mold and I'll, I'll talk about why later. Also yeah, I'm wearing a t-shirt, it's hot out, so sue me. Don't, don't, don't actually sue me. Please don't sue me. Though come to think of it, a jacket might have been better. Like, I wouldn't have had, like, furnace heat.
touching my bare arms, which are now mostly hairless, by the way, thanks to this. Too much information. I'm sorry. Very, very sorry. I would also like to take this opportunity to mention aluminum does not create grinding sparks, but man does it create dust that you don't realize is all over the place, including your feet until later. Also, wear a respirator. I'm not really sure breathing in aluminum dust is all that great for your lungs or any dust. And here are the results. This thing, that didn't turn out. These kind of look all nasty, so these are all going back in the melt pile. But these two, these came out pretty cool, the Jeep face and the Datsun symbol. So the reason I did the Jeep face again, I did it again here because my brother has a Wrangler now. And even though this isn't a Wrangler front end, it, it's Jeep. It looks like a Jeep. What I did is I hit this, like I used an angle grinder all around it there. But then I just hit this with some sandpaper, like a foam block covered in sandpaper. And that gave it a little more of a sheen. So it's shiny, but it still leaves that cool sand cast texture. So I think he'll like that, hopefully. Dotson, I do not have a Dotson, nor does anyone in my family have a Dotson, but Cone Dodger, who's a, a YouTuber, he's got a channel called Cone Dodger Motorsports where he's trying to rebuild a, uh, an old Dotson pickup. Uh, that just started. He's also most of the way through a rust bucket old Supra that he's repairing, which is going to be awesome. And he also has a uh, supercharged 240 Nissan 240 autocross car, which is really cool. So you might want to go check those out. Cone Dodger also has a gaming channel if you're into games, mostly car related. So it's definitely cool. I want to bring your attention to these, the 3D print lines. Look at that. They actually preserve somewhat. So that's kind of cool. Now it didn't fill in these details very well. And the reason for that is uh, head pressure. So when you do it in a sand casting, there's like the stuff's down covered in sand and there's a riser and the liquid aluminum in here is pushing down, forcing it into all the little crevices. This didn't have that. This had this much head pressure because this was the top. So uh, yeah, no head, not enough head pressure to force it in all the details. Also, it's a lot thicker, you see? I, I kind of ground this smooth, but this is more the natural surface all thick and lumpy and that's because aluminum has surface tension quite a bit higher than water so when it forms like a bubble like you see water droplets form a bubble an aluminum bubble is much much taller uh, so that's why i ended up with really thick castings here and the head pressure i suspect the head pressure is also why open face castings they always seem to look kind of lumpy you know which is kind of cool and like ruggedy looking right rugged that's a cool jeep word i'm gonna go with that yeah, rugged, not lumpy, rugged. I think the reason for that is the head pressure and both of the facts, the head pressure and the uh, service tension, were told to me by Chirpy from Chirpy's Tinkerings uh, on my Discord channel. Yes, I have a Discord. If you want in, send me an email. I'll send you an invite. He told me those, uh, those two interesting facts about two minutes before I poured the metal. So the metal was already melting. So yeah, plenty of time, plenty of time to readjust my plan. Uh, no, no it wasn't, but I poured it anyway, and these, these kind of came out. So yeah, my conclusions are as follows. Open face casting, you can do it. It does work, but it's lumpy because of open face casting. I do not think I'm going to do open face casting anymore. You know, half the flasks was not double the fun, but maybe a different mold would have been, I don't know, 70% the fun? I don't know. I don't know the math on how much fun it was, but it, it did kind of work.